Now that you've seen everything that I have picked up, it's time for a little bit of an educational course as well as my review. Now I'm gonna call it that because I was fortunate enough to spend quite a bit of time with the woman that is the trainer for the Kendo Group and their beauty brands. So I have a lot of information to throw at you. Robin, Rihanna, Fenty. So Fenty is Rihanna's last name. She goes by her middle name. And Fenty is owned by both Rihanna and the Kendo Group. I like to think of Kendo as the incubator for its parent company, which is LVMH or Louis Vuitton Monet Hennessy. And it has all of the luxury or the high-end beauty brands that is underneath the umbrella for LVMH. Kendo approaches Rihanna and signs a deal with her to basically develop and help build Fenty so from the ground up, create it and so forth, and give it this global presence because it's going to be sold throughout Sephora stores as well as whatever other retailers they decide on. And its overall goal is obviously to have that long-term potential and long-term growth. Women of color, period, here in the United States, and this is where I live in America, we make up 35% of the overall population when it comes to the cosmetic department, the cosmetic spectrum as a whole. And women of color is not just obviously myself being African-American, it encompasses other ethnicities as well. But overall, we're 35%. When we go to the counters, we're not represented in that regards as far as skin tones. Of course, we experience that as well in the drugstores. So from Rihanna's vision, 
it's I want to create a brand. I want to create cosmetic items that everybody can enjoy. So it does go beyond a woman of color. Uh, we're talking from very pale skin, from all ethnicities, from all backgrounds. And it doesn't matter who you are, including your gender. Again, on my own research from looking at LVMH, they are describing the actual Fendi brand, because again, they are the parent company, so they are in ownership of it. They describe Fendi as that girly girl, but with an edge. In a sense, Rihanna. They also have market research from the MDG group, and they are a marketing division group that collects data on various industries as well as various people in general. And to date, Rihanna herself is still the most marketable celebrity on the earth. Her fragrances and her sneaker shoes, for example, again, to date, still outsell and outperform from other celebrities. For the parent company and then for Kendo, of course, to help put Fendi on the map and really help bring Rihanna's vision to life. And that is one of the reasons why the launch of Fendi is so massive. Massive launch, let's make sure we have a lot of products available for everybody to buy. And let's make sure that it's in as many countries as possible. I believe it was about 150 countries. A huge launch for a huge celebrity. Let's look at Rihanna herself, okay? When it comes to beauty in general, her number one focus is skincare. I'm here for that, because that is my passion as well. So for her, it was very important to create Fendi with the skin and skincare in mind. So they merge together. So that's another reason why we're looking at products being launched that focus on the complexion that focus on, let's do the, what Rihanna, as well as LVMH states, this is the Fendi face first. We'll try and say that three times. We wanna focus on the complexion. We wanna focus on the matte appearance. However, for Rihanna, she wanted it to be not only matte, but she wanted your own glow to come through. So I want it to be skin-like, I want it to be matte, but I want that glow to come through. But also glow can come from cream products and it can also come from powder products, which is why we have those. So very simple, again, complexion. And then we're gonna knock it off with a little bit of color. And a little bit of color is the gloss, the gloss on the lips. Now that you have that crash course, Fenty 101, let's go over the products one by one. I will also be inserting my review at the same time. I have a lot of the products already on my face. First, let's start off with the primer. Now, from speaking with the trainer, I learned that the primer is marketed as a primer to go in conjunction with the foundation. Coming from somebody that already has a lot of primers and there just really wasn't time to look at ingredients and so forth, I knew I wanted to do that when I got back home. I asked for a sample. So I did receive a sample from the trainer. When I'm looking down, I'm looking down at my, my notes that I, I have here. The ISO decan, and I know I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I'll put it down on the screen. I know that that ingredient is the first one that caught my eye. It's not going to trigger acne. It's not gonna cause any type of irritation or any type of development of bacteria and acne for your face, but it also doesn't clog your pores. So I was actually happy to see that way up at the top of the um, ingredient list for this primer. This ingredient is also light to the touch. So it's light to the touch, which means on your face alone, it's gonna feel like air, like there's nothing there. So again, another plus in my eyes it is. Now this ingredient is also a hydrocarbon, that I can pronounce, <laughs> which basically means is it's going to be effective in making sure that moisture is not going to evaporate from the skin. And it's also helping that stay intact, which means 
it's gonna help our makeup last longer. Now, if you're thinking, okay, in basic English, <laughs> what does that mean? The makeup's gonna last longer. Our skin is still going to be hydrated. It's gonna work good with the foundation or frankly, any foundation you pair with it. So I am happy that I got a, a, a decent size sample here. Not only do I wanna use it with this foundation, but I want to use it with other foundations as well. Next is the foundation, which I personally was the most excited to play with because it's the complexion and anything for the complexion I'm there for. This is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. That's the packaging. Now I do want to talk about the packaging at this point because it's just pretty much gonna be the same around the entire, all the packaging. I prefer the packaging that's on the box. And this is just gonna be my own petty opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. I love this packaging. I think that the box itself and the whole color scheme matches the girly but edgy vision that the company is you know, projecting, as well as Rihanna herself. Now, when I look at the packaging itself for the actual products that come out of the box, that's where it ends. It ends right there. It's the shapes that is what I, I don't like. I don't like this hexagon, pectagon, pentagon, all of this, shapes that's in everything honeycomb looking i never liked those shapes when i was a kid that was the first thing i thought of when i saw the promo pictures i was like Ugh. the foundation bottle at least i can hang with because it's still that you know cylinder shape and then the cap itself with the pump i always love a good pump but when you put the cap on it it just goes you know, right down. However, this is where it gets annoying. I cannot stand when there is some sort of a shape going on. And when you have the cap, you have to make sure that the cap has to perfectly align in because there's a thought process. I don't want to think, I don't want to think. So what do I do with most everything that has a cap? I always leave it off and I have a little bag full of caps. And then if I have to rifle through, I'll rifle through it. But mostly if it's here at home, I just leave it without the cap so I don't even have to deal with it. That's just me and I probably will start leaving this cap off. See, I just had to think right now, where am I gonna put it? The top ingredients are there to help stop water loss. Keep the moisture in the skin. Let's keep the skin hydrated. Let's keep the skin moisturized, which is going to show as more radiant skin although it has that soft matte appearance. Personally, that is a foundation a finish that I can get on board with. I do know that there are individuals, because I have worked with them, that are highly allergic to dimethicone. There's some that just cannot stand it. It also not only causes allergic reactions to their skin, puffiness, redness, itchiness, um, they start to break out. You know, so I do understand that. So I definitely want to state if you have sensitive skin, if you have allergies, anything, make sure you are doing your research, be diligent on that aspect and check it out first. However, I feel that with the other ingredients that it's surrounding the, this particular dimethicone, it's helping it glide on the skin and it's helping it retain the moisture. Quick scent wise, I did detect a very, faint smell. Now I say faint because I've noticed from a few other reviews that this foundation smells strong to some people and then to me it smells very light. It is a very light scent to me. It's not an unpleasant scent. It's not even like a baby powder type scent. That was kind of the first thing I thought of but I also thought of like perfume like a soft perfume. It's very faint, but it's nothing that lingered on my skin, nothing that I felt like I need to take this off. How to use. It does state on the bottle, it states on the box, it states on the website, it states all over the instructions that you need to shake this up. So I definitely make sure that I am shaking this up very well before I use this. The biggest takeaway that I got from the trainer and what I can pass on to you is that with this foundation, skin prep is key. The skin needs to be moisturized and it needs to be moisturized well. That is Rihanna's thought process going into this foundation. This foundation works the best when our skin is very moisturized. I cannot I cannot stress that enough. Now, this is actually something that I personally do, so I'm also gonna, just gonna give you a tip 
let's say you're not really sure as far as the hydration level and you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I really did it that good. And you want to use the foundation for that day. I just recommend just pull in a face oil. So what I would do is I would just put a light layer of the foundation on first, just put a light layer on. Then as a second layer, I would just pull in whatever face oil you have. However, I would prefer you to use one that's a little bit thinner. Don't use a face oil that's so thick. So the one that I use, I mean, I have a full size of it. It's the Smashbox Primer Oil. I like this one because it doesn't react on people. I like to just take my spatula and I'll take out some of the oil, usually about two drops, mix it in. If you have drier skin, you can put three drops in, but mix it in with the foundation and use that as your second layer for that extra hydration that will work. There is a sponge in the line and I did pick that up because I love, I love my sponges. This is the uh, Precision Makeup Sponge and this is it right here. Now it's still drying because I did use it uh, this morning. Whether this sponge was designed to go exactly with this foundation, I do not know that. I do know that this sponge is gonna be, you know, neck and neck with the Beauty Blender compared. So I'll give you my comparisons on that as well. The material for this sponge definitely feels different than the Beauty Blender. I can tell that immediately. Dry. When you get this wet, it's a, incredibly soft. I mean, we're talking soft, soft, soft. And it feels very soft on the skin as well. The main thing that I noticed with using a brush with this foundation is that, and this is this side, it looks drier. I don't know how it turned out that way, but it does. With this brush, because this is the only one I've used with it so far, it just looks drier. Now, when I used it on this side with the sponge, it looked skin-like, okay? Getting some moisture in from the sponge. So what I want to do moving forward this week, because I'm gonna continue to use this foundation probably every single day. I wanna use the sponge with other foundations just to see, but I also wanna use a different brush because I have another brush that looks like this, but it has different hairs. So I just wanna just see, I wanna see, is it just a foundation that looks better with a brush? Does it look better with a sponge? Or does it look better with my fingers? I haven't had the opportunity yet to use it with my fingers and I want to do that this week. Now I wanna talk about, uh, briefly, the new controversy with this foundation with it the dry time and oxidizing and so forth. So I just want to touch briefly on that. What's confusing to me is that everything that we've been using, everything that you use oxidizes. You just obviously don't see it with the naked eye, but it, it is changing because oxygen around, it's everywhere. So we can't avoid that. But with this foundation, how Rihanna's vision was, how it was created, it is going to dry down, oxidize, to the color supposed to dry down and oxidize to the color of your actual skin tone, as close of a match as possible. It's the same thing. With this foundation as well, it is going to set itself. So you don't need to set it with a powder, loose powder, press powder. You can apply it, it's going to dry, and you're done. You can start applying your additional products as well. And to my knowledge, the matchsticks are the same thing because I've actually have not had to apply any type of, you know, setting powder, anything on top of the matchsticks to set those as well. This is where the powder comes into play. Now, if you don't wanna use the Invisi powder, you can use your own pressed blotting powder, like, you know, I have my own, if I didn't want to use that. And just apply it in the areas in which you want, you know, your T-zone, wherever you don't want that additional shine. That could be different on everybody, of course. So it's just another step you don't have to do. It's marketed as that and that is how it was designed and that's how it is supposed to be used. If you feel that, look, I, I, I have to powder, I have to set it because that's how you know, you're, you're used to your ways, you can do that. No one's telling you that you can't. The thing is, is don't be surprised, don't be alarmed when the foundation might not perform the same on you. 
I feel if you add additional powder to this because of the the finish that it produces, you're gonna look extra crispy. You're gonna look extra dry, okay? So if you feel that you need to add additional powder, again, keep in mind the expectation, you're probably just not gonna get the same results as if you just let it oxidize on its own, let it dry down, and then go ahead and proceed as normal. So I was just so surprised to hear all the comments and the back and forth and this, that, and whoop, whoop, and doop, doop. It's like this, this, this foundation is not as high maintenance as I feel people are making it out to be. It's just a foundation. You prep your skin. You can apply a primer. You cannot apply a primer. It's really up to you. You know, you can use your products the way you want. At the end of the day, what makes you feel comfortable is what's important. I personally have not had an issue uh, with it changing gray, changing orange. This, again, 390 has been the closest match to my skin tone. I mean, it just blends right in. Blend it right into my neck, blend it everywhere right in. You use the foundation the way it's meant to be. You shouldn't have an issue. If you want to detour off that route and it start adding in all like different concealers and different powders, you're going to get a different performance. Everything is oxidizing. You, you can't help it. Okay. The, the chemistry between not only the, the oxygen hitting the air, hitting the uh, formula, hitting your other foundations, your products that you use to prep your skin, your skin's oils, the chemicals, the minerals, they all react differently. You never know. It could be your blush as well. You don't know. Everything is turning and there's just really no way around it. But I definitely wanted to make that noted because this foundation, it's, it, this is nothing new, okay? Just really wanna stress that it's not new. The only concept is it's, it's new in the sense of, oh, it's something that is just going to dry down, oxidize, and I don't even have to set it. And actually that should be something that should make, I think a lot of people happy because it's a less step you have to do. And you still are gonna get a nice, beautiful finish. I feel beautiful finish on the skin. Coverage rise with the soft matte foundation. I feel that it is a medium coverage. I personally do not feel that it's a full coverage. For today, I used three layers because I really was curious on how far I could build this up. Three layers. It still doesn't feel like anything's on my skin, but I did use three layers. And that's why my final conclusion is, I feel this is medium coverage because I still had to pull in spot concealers to cover up the dark marks on my face. This foundation had a lot of pigment in it and I'm gonna compare it to, let's say, the Double Wear concealer. With Double Wear, I can actually cover the dark marks with just the foundation alone. I don't have to pull in any concealer because that foundation has a high concentration of pigment. You may have retinas, you may have other um, imperfections on your face that maybe one layer with this can cover and maybe you know you think, oh, well to me that's full coverage, but I personally feel that this is a medium coverage. It builds, it builds from light to medium, but as far as a true full coverage, no. I should not have to pull in an additional product if it was truly, in my opinion, a full coverage foundation. The last area, of course, I want to touch on with the foundation is the actual color itself, which you're probably like, dang girl, when are you ever gonna tell me what color you are? I was color matched to shade 390, and it's the exact color of my skin. I noticed that the numbers that ended in 90, and I saw them swatched on the fair skin girls, like 290 looked green on one woman. I was like, whoa, that's really green. Olive complexion. Then 390, and then 490 is a cool undertone, but for much darker skin. So I thought, because a lovely viewer of the channel um, had left a tag on Instagram and she said that for me to look at 400 because that might be our shade. She's the same shade as me. Now, when they put 400 on me, I wrote down on my notes, it dries and then it was pulling red. I have written down for 420. It blended into my skin, but it was yellow based. It was, you could definitely see the yellow more on my skin tone. So 420 is a golden tone, a more yellow based color if you need assistance with that. But 
390 turned out to be the exact color of my skin because it has olive in it. 390 is still a warm shade that they have in the lineup, but they added olive into it and then it just blended right into my skin. Another reason why it is so important if you live near Sephora that you can go in and get color ID'd, here is the reason why. This is the, the biggest scoop I got for you. Rihanna and the company, the brand, they're going to be bringing in, I'm just gonna say 40 more additional bottles. I don't know the exact number, but we're just gonna say another 40. How are the next 40 gonna come in? This is where we come into play. When we go into Sephora, we have to get color matched. And we have to save our color ID number and our profile. What Fenty and Kendo is even doing right now is those ID numbers that are missing from the existing 40 bottles, that is going to be the data that is needed to help create the next 40 that comes in. So here's the example. Let's say it's launch day, I walked in and I get color matched. And my color number in Sephora system does not match a color in the Fenty foundation out of all 40 bottles. They color match me, we got my color ID, it's saved to my profile, I go buy whatever I wanna buy, you know, from another brand because I can't get their foundation and I leave. That data is stored in the system and it says to Kendo, it says to Fenty, here's somebody in California, because I'm in California, that couldn't get matched to Fenty. Now this is gonna be global. So let's say you're in Australia, Friday or whatever day, customer walks in and she's in Australia. She gets color matched. And she also is not in this system. As far as a color ID, hers also doesn't match. Let's say that I share that color ID with that customer in Australia. And then let's say there's one in Japan and there's one in Singapore. I mean, you get the idea. But let's just say there was a substantial amount of people over a period of time that we all had that same ID number or around that same ID number that wasn't in Fenty. And here comes all this data. Now they have all this data. They have all these color IDs and they're going to be making the 40 additional bottles. I am number 390 and let's say you're number 400. So the new 40 bottles that come in you know for sure, let's say that number is 395. That system tells Fenty, you need to create number 395, that whole pool of people that didn't have that color ID in the system. So we'll create that foundation and that will be number 395. That bottle will be one of the new 40 bottles that come into the system, that come into the existing foundation. You know, we talk about inclusion. We talk about there should be colors for everybody. And that's Rihanna's vision as well. I want a color for everybody. If we don't go into the store, we do not find a way to get color ID. Because I believe you can call Sephora too and try and get color matched as close as you can with representative of the phone. As long as you can get some ID number in the system, it's going to help them track. It's going to help them gather the data we are going to help create the next 40 missing bottles, especially for the global range. I think that this is huge. So again, if you are able to get color matched, please do. Because I think this is information that's going to be very helpful for them in creating the next 40 bottles. Next I want to talk about is the matchsticks. And I actually picked up the matchstick trio. And I was ab absolutely ecstatic to be able to fit into the trio because of the price. For the price alone, it's like I got one stick for free and that would actually just be the one that is supposed to be the highlighter. So it is the cinnamon or cinnamon. Yeah, they just cut out cinnamon in front, cinnamon or whatever. So anyways, this is the highlighter stick. Now. The highlighter sticks was not something I personally was planning on picking up because I have highlighter sticks that I don't even really reach for that much. When it comes to highlighter sticks or highlighter period, I prefer uh, liquid first 
then powder, then cream. That's just me. Again, we have this packaging. I do not like the shape. I just don't like the shape. And they do magnetize all over the place. It's not something that's cute to me. As you can see, just, just dropped it. And I actually have been dropping these. It's not something that, anyways, we have it. So they have the match trios together. They have the light, medium, and deep. So I went immediately to the deep. And I knew that if the contour shade, which is espresso, I knew that if this worked on my skin tone, and it does because it's a warmer tone, that the matching concealer would work too, and it does. And that's how I picked out my, basically my skin tone concealer and then the contour stick. Now, when it comes to concealers and when it comes to the contour, if you've been watching for a while, I love my cream formulas. I love it in a stick. So I'm very pleased with the Espresso. As you saw in the demonstration, it just blends out, it blends out very well. 390 Foundation Espresso Matchstick Suede Concealer, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, um, assistance if you're close to my skin tone as well. This is another thing though with the packaging, I'm sick of this because I have to make sure, you know, it, it slides in. Like that. Looking up the ingredients on the matchsticks, it does contain coconut. However, the coconut is much further down in the list, but I have been looking. I did a spot check. I haven't had any breakouts. I haven't had any hives. So uh, let's hope it stays that way. But in case you are allergic as well, like me, um, it does contain coconut. Then the last complexion product I picked up is the Invisi Matte, and this is the blotting powder. Now the Invisi Matte comes in the powder version and then they have the blotting sheets. I hate blotting sheets. I didn't even use that when I was a kid. So I knew I wasn't going to go down that route. Now I do actually like the case. I like this case. It has that Jetson look to me. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of. Very space age look here. And with the actual brush that you can buy with it, I didn't purchase it, but apparently it fits in right there. So I actually that I like. I like because I, when I put it in my bag, I have the brush right there. In my makeup purse right now, I have my blotting powder, but then I have this brush here, which I've had for centuries, literally centuries, and it's still, I use it. And then I have the brush like that, but it's nice if you can have it in there. The trainer told me that the brush itself, the design, the cut of the brush is designed to pick up the right amount of powder from the actual case. So you would take the brush and then you just, you know, blot and dab where you need it. Apparently that is what Rihanna's vision was. So I have, you know, that skin-like appearance, but then I'm just going to blot where I need to blot. So that's why the powder was created. Or if you don't want the powder, again, the blotting sheets. Now for today, I actually used the sponge inside and the sponge feels, it reminds me of like the cushion sponge. And I just kind of went like this and it did work. You know, I, I thought it worked and it worked fine. For me, I'm just so used to just using a brush. I'll just go in with the brush. But the fact that this is designed to pop that brush in here, I'm thinking I might go back and look, look, take a little look at that brush to stick it in here. Again, just the ease of it. I have blotted with this powder, I would say more than I have ever reached for the, my Cover FX powder. I have to admit that. Now, this one has a slight tint to it, but maybe it's just because I'm trying this out just to see, but I've noticed that when I've blot in the morning, that's it. I haven't really had to blot anymore. So. I'm gonna keep using this. I'm thinking, hmm, you know, it's, it's performing well. When I looked at the ingredients up at the top, I noticed that there is three, there's a trio, I just to say the, the, the trio, of aluminum that is typically found like in the deodorants. And I'm only mentioning this because I know that there's people that are very adamant on making sure that they do not want that absorbing into their skin because you know, there's studies that it's linked to breast cancer. However, they've tried to add it to breast cancer cells. And even though it's grown in growth, there's still, or I feel at this point of me at the time of when I was researching it, there still is not a direct link. And I could be wrong, so apologize if I'm ignorant on that matter, 
but I do want to throw that out that in this powder the there is the trio of ingredients that is a cause of that this trio of ingredients they help you not basically perspire it's going to help the sweat and the you know all that coming onto your skin so that's probably why this powder works pretty well but again I just want to throw that out there in case that you are a customer and you want to avoid that make sure you do take a look at the ingredient list for the um, invisible powder now for some glow let's move on to the kilowatt powders now I have two of them that I picked up and I went in with the notion that trophy wife is going to be mine that was the one I was eyeing because I love yellow. I love that vibrant gold. I want to be dripping in it. I want to be peeling off <laughs> Charlize Theron style. That was my whole entire look I had in mind. So I am wearing it right now. Of course, I have it on as eyeshadow, but I also have it on my cheeks. You can wear it at night, but I'm not going to... Hey, I'm living now. I'm not waiting till night. If I waited to to go out at night to wear this, I'd probably be dead by the time I got to it. Absolutely not. I'm going to wear it during the day. I'm going to, you know, shine. It is intense and the sunlight is just, you know, it's glittering, but I don't mind that. People will stare. I don't mind that either. Give them something to look at. It's beautiful. It's beautiful on the eyes. Tear duct. You can put it on your lips if you want. The sky is the limit. With trophy wipe this is a powder that is quite metallic it is glittery it's out there like i mentioned the highlighters that i immediately thought of were my other glittery metallic highlighters that i love so i don't mind metallic i don't mind i don't mind the glitter i don't mind metallic i like that formula i did try on the other highlighter that was white i think it's called metal moon i i didn't write it down but what I remember is that one is quite subtle on me. I remember when I applied it to my cheekbones, it pulled yellow. I didn't even really see a lot of white, but I was told from the trainer that, that one is, is geared towards lighter skin tones or if you want a highlighter that is subtle. So definitely not as bold and intense as of course Trophy Wife, but there is another um, highlighter as far as it's by itself to just one highlighter in the pan because there's also the kilowatts that have the split pans here now the split pan here the way I'm kind of thinking about this one is I thought it was one side is like more subtle like a subtle highlighter and the other side is more intense almost like you know like a metallic I also enjoy just layering it so just putting this one on top and then putting the sparkle one on top just like almost like as a blush and then just apply it as a highlighter as well so I went with this shade this is the ginger binge and Moscow mule out of looking at all the other shades like there's that one that reminds me almost kind of like a champagne pop just of the colors they all looked like ones I already have in my collection but this color I, I don't have this color so I thought maybe I'll just try this one because I don't have it one thing I want to note about the highlighters as far as the ingredients what I wrote down the line is cruelty free however the ingredient in the highlighters the highlighters are not vegan. I wrote down because it has carmine in it, which is uh, made from beetles. So therefore it is not vegan. So I definitely wanted to make sure that you knew that. But otherwise, um, all the highlighters that are either in the single or the dual pans, again, not vegan. Other than what was in the match trio sticks as far as the illuminator and cinnamon, I did try out the other cream sticks. There was that one that was that beautiful, uh, orange coral shade they had the blonde one I remember blonde and that one reminded me of, of um, trophy wife so I didn't pick that one up and then I applied tripping on last and again it was it was okay but it was a little bit subtle and the last item that I picked up and we need to talk about is the Fenty Beauty gloss bomb I do like this applicator this is the um, the ballet tip so it's kind of curved the smell it reminds me of candy, like as a kid. That's exactly what it reminds me of. It has that shape again. 
but it clicks into place so it stays nice and secure. And there is only one color. So again, the whole let's start off with the complexion, end it off with a little bit of color is the gloss bomb. I'm checking out the ingredients on the gloss bomb. There wasn't anything in there that alarmed me. Again, you're welcome to look on the website and kind of do some further research on it. Now when it comes to gloss, I am really not a gloss girl. I'm a lipstick girl, but I really am not a gloss girl. I mean, I pulled this out. These, these are my glosses right here. They all fit into one cup. So those are my favorite ones. Those are the ones I pull the most and I like those. So when it comes to gloss, for me to actually buy a gloss, it has to be a gloss that's gonna wow me. And I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna pick it apart. <laughs> so that's why I'm gonna pick it up. But I bought this gloss because of you guys. I bought it for the hype and I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. There was just so much buzz about it. I mean, my goodness, you guys, not you guys specifically, but just everything that I was seeing about, everything I was seeing about this gloss, everybody was just buzzing about this gloss. So it did pull me in. So I said, if I don't get this gloss, just to see what the, <laughs> Why is everybody going crazy about this gloss? Um, maybe I'm missing out. I like that it feels thick. It has that thickness to it that I enjoy because it feels like there's something there on my lips. I love how shiny it looks. It's like glass, depending on how much you put on too. So for me, I kind of feel it's like a gloss I can wear with no lipstick. Just really kind of quick, put it on and go little hint of color, but otherwise it looks pretty sheer. Is it a necessity? Absolutely not. If you are not a gloss person, there's no reason for you to pick it up. If you don't make YouTube videos, if you're not into any of that, there's no reason for you to pick it up. If I was the person on the opposite end of the camera looking, no, it's not something that I would have picked up. But I have it now. Am I gonna keep it? Yes. I'll make sure it stays in this cup so that way it forces me to go in there and, and use it. But I see myself moving forward using it a lot by itself and just putting it on and go. And that is it. I feel this video is going to be forever long, but that's everything Fenty that I picked up. Um, I hope that this video was helpful for you. All the little bit of additional information that I could get from the trainer and, and able to pass back to you. Here we have this company that just stepped out there with quite a bit of products to cover a huge amount of the population out there. And we're talking men and women, all different backgrounds, ethnicities, um, skin tones. And hopefully again, by you going to get color matched the best way you can in, in person or at least over the phone with a Sephora representative, hopefully we can help uh, dictate and bring in those additional bottles to kind of definitely help cover a lot more of the population. So I'm excited to see what is going to come out more from this brand. I certainly will keep my eyes on it. That's all I have for you today. So thank you very much for stopping by and watching. Now that Fenty is over, the next video or that's in production that I'm editing is Too Faced. Too Faced uh, Peaches and Cream. How can you not sing that song when you hear it? My thoughts and prayers are with all of you around the world because we seem to be having a lot of unusual disasters and uh, occurrences going on right now. So please be safe, be kind to one another, and I hope to see you come back here for the next video, which might be Too Faced or Estee Lauder. We'll see which one gets finished editing first. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye.